These are my family's two Tesla Model Ys. They both look nearly identical because they're both 2023s. They're both also all wheel drives, but the white one is a standard range and the blue one is a long the range. The white standard range is a little bit older, was purchased in March of 2023. We've owned it ever since. The blue one was purchased in August 2023. The white Model Y is a little bit special because it's a limited run of standard range Model Ys they built out of the Austin facility that includes the 4860 battery cell with the structural pack and the Giga casting in the rear. The blue was built out of the Fremont factory, has a standard 2170 lithium ion battery cell. In the last month or so, Tesla released a new feature to their software allowing us owners to do a battery health check. So it, so it occurred to me I have the unique ability to test and compare the battery degradation of a 4680 Model Y with a 2170 Model Y. Now this 4680 is a bit unique. This is Tesla's first battery cell that they produced in house. And these are the oldest available on the market right now. They stopped selling this standard range Model Y with this battery pack so that they could use all the production in the cyber trucks. So they couldn't make enough to supply both. So they chose, okay, we're gonna stop the Model Y. We're gonna put them in the, the cyber truck alone. So these really didn't go back into production until the Cybertruck started. Those are becoming about a year old. So we've got a two year old and one month white Model Y with 36,000 miles on it and a year old with the Panasonic battery pack and 28,000 miles. I'm gonna do the battery health check on both and see which one, maybe the same, maybe one's doing better, one's doing worse. I would expect the white battery pack to have more degradation uh, for a couple reasons it's a smaller battery pack the use case as i said is pretty much the same daily driving we did take it on a road trip from central wisconsin to yellowstone um, which was a massive road trip in its first year with us um, but the battery pack is smaller so theoretically it should have more cycles on it in addition to it being older with more miles on it the blue one, standard battery pack, a little bit bigger battery pack, so theoretically with less miles on, um, it should have less cycles on the battery. Here's where the cars are kept every night in a garage. I do live in a cold climate, central Wisconsin, many months uh, below freezing here. This garage is heated, so I keep it at 55 degrees all winter and then ambient temperature all summer. Um, so they live a pretty sheltered life. I share a Tesla mobile charger between both vehicles. So they're not charged or plugged in with power all the time. I just alternate nights. Um, really don't need the range for our use. And I've been getting away with one, so I haven't added a second one in yet. Um, the other thing is I schedule charge midnight to 8 a.m and then power goes off basically to take advantage of off-peak charging rates. Performing the battery health test is fairly easy. You want to get the battery down as low as possible. It won't let you start with, with more than 20% battery. Uh, but you want to get it down because the car wants to discharge basically to zero and then slowly charge over the next 12 hours and with that protocol, it's able to give you an assessment of battery health and zero to 100%. Each percentage that takes away is total battery capacity that has been lost. This is the information shown on the vehicle screen while the test is being performed. I have completed the test on both vehicles. I am very surprised by the results. I would have assumed the blue Model Y, because like I said, it has a larger battery pack, less miles on it, it should have seen less cycles on the battery pack, would have less degradation. But that one was sitting at 91%. That means our standard range 4680 white Model Y did better at 93%. So very respectable result for more miles and slightly older. So what does this mean 
So how could that be? Battery chemistries are basically the same. I'm sure there's some slight differences in the exact materials used in those battery cells. Um, but there's a couple things I've noticed with owning both vehicles. So I do occasionally supercharge these. It's not very often, probably once every two months. And anyone with one of these 4680 Model Ys will tell you the charge curve is not as good as the long range or any of the Model Ys with the standard battery pack or the 2170 cell. Um, they're just slower. So I think part of that's thermal management. We've got a larger cylinder. It's harder for that heat to get out of that cell and to be taken away by the thermal management. Um, so they have to go slower with it to not overheat the cell. Is that the reason why there's less degradation on it? Possibly. But I suspect it has more to do with the actual materials used to construct the battery cell since Tesla is doing it in-house at relatively low volumes, I wonder if the quality of the anode and cathode material was just better, less impurities. Um, we know now by doing studies that a lot of the battery degradation is due to impurities in those materials as the electrons flow in and out of there. Um, the, impurities, the impurities can take up those voids and not provide the amount of electrons that were originally available. Either way, this is good news for Tesla and the 4680 battery cell. Uh, one of the major concerns that we all have with owning an electric vehicle is how long is my battery gonna last? And this is very good results for the 4680 battery cell and Cybertruck owners and those of us with the standard range Model Y. If you have any ideas on what could possibly have caused this difference between the two vehicles, put them in the comments below. Interested to hear your thoughts on and what you're seeing in battery degradation. And if anybody else has the 4680 Model Y out there, let me know what your battery health check said for you. Uh, interested to know how many miles on and what you're seeing for battery degradation. In our day-to-day -day life and commuting with these Model Ys, I haven't noticed any battery degradation in our everyday life. I normally charge both up to 80%, just keep the limit at 80% uh, and try to treat them as nicely as possible. But as a result of this, it, it kind of enters your brain in a little bit and makes it feel a little bit more real. Oh, I'm only at 91%, I'm at 93%. Um, how can I make this slow down or last as, as long as possible? Um, so one of the things that I went to EV Dance and got another mobile charger just to keep power on both vehicles whenever they're in the garage so the battery doesn't have to work at all during those times. That's one of the things I've read as a top tip um, to try to slow down this degradation. Obviously, I'm not going to stop driving them and using them. That's what they're made to do. But when they're in the garage sitting, why not have power on them if that helps the battery? So. Um, this is a very nice charger. My other one's a Tesla mobile charger. That one works very good too. Uh, but now that the Nax is available from pretty much every aftermarket place, um, this saves you a bit of money going over Tesla and it has a 25 foot cable. So, so one other very cool thing and handy that EV Dance has is extension cables for your chargers. So you can see I have to back in the white Model Y here to, for, so the charge port is close enough to the charger to reach. Uh, they make an extension cable that you could just pull this in normally and run it around the vehicle. Um, unfortunately, they're so popular they were out of stock, uh, but next time they restock, I think I'm gonna get one of those too. Thanks for watching. Adios.